poster design is about selling a movie in general. It's, it's, it's been like this for, for years and nothing changed actually. What changed is, is the lifetime of the poster. It's like they sell the movie, they sell the movie on the walls in the theaters, but they also sell the movie online right now. It's the second life of a poster. It's way smaller, but it's the same poster. Slightly tweaked maybe sometimes, but in general, they just sell the movie. The process of making a poster in Hollywood, it's, it reminds a factory. If you can imagine illustrators, designers, copywriters, clients, this all has to work together. There are genres of the movies that we have to assign certain look to. There is a comedy, they have a separate rules, there is action movies, there is a thriller, there is sci-fi. We have to reinvent every single poster, we have to rework it from the beginning. Every year there is about 700 movies released in the States and each movie requires a poster. If we apply cookie cutter to two or three, I think I'll run, I'll go out of business. I can't do it. When it comes to designing a poster, we always start with the title treatment. It's always there, no matter if it's a, just a teaser or, or the full campaign, it always starts with a title. It always starts with a billing block those tiny little names at the bottom, the actors' names, tagline, copy line. It's always somewhere there, different shapes of forms, but we always start with that. So if you want to call it a template, yes, we may treat it as a template, but it also varies. Uh, we also start with the so-called focal point on, on the poster. We decide where people should look at, and certain genres has a certain areas in a poster where the focal point is. If you look at the comedies, the title is mostly on the top. It's funny, it's, it's a bold type, mostly red or yellow or something like that. When it comes to serious movies, it's always on the bottom in a, in a different font, something more serious. So we start with that and then everything goes. And just to say, for every single movie, like A class movie, we design hundreds of posters every year. It takes about a year to design a poster. It may sound like a long time, but there is actually a lot to go through. And every poster, it's, it's something between art and science and law, because there are requirements from the actors, uh, there are requirements from the studios, and there's our design sense and marketing you know, points into it. We design a few hundred posters, sometimes close to a thousand posters, thousand different projects, thousand different versions of different takes on the same topic. Why? Why do we, why we do this? Why, why do we waste so much time and money? We, we do research this way too. Because there are so many movies that they've been done before and sometimes they're just similar movies to the, the ones that are cur currently produced. We have to differentiate them somehow. And there are people, they, they recollect, they're, they're, they, they remember those movies and we, we have to drift away from that. So just, just to find a sweet spot when no one will tell us, oh, this poster looks like a particular one, it's, it's really hard. It's really hard for, 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 for some designs to, to, to achieve that. And when we brainstorm, there are not finished posters, they're just, we call them comps. They're just versions of that. They're just something better than rough sketches. It's, it's easy to develop them, to the, take them to the next level, which is fin, uh, finished product, but there is so much, I don't want to call it waste, but there is so much good artwork that somehow reminds someone of something. You know, it's like, oh, this looks like that. And your eight hours of work goes right to the trash. And this is what we're, in a way, we're trying to fight it, but there is no way to avoid it because there are so many designs that already have been designed and created and, and people's minds works in a mysterious ways. So it, there's no way to predict it. If you present 20 comps to the studio or to the director, there is always, oh, I've seen this, I've seen that. Uh, that. No way, this will never go. This is not my movie, thank you. Poster has to sell. This is the most important part. It has to sell. It's not a gallery. It's not my own personal artwork somewhere but it has to sell. It's a marketing tool. Don't, let's don't forget about this. When, when it happens that it's a beautiful thing, that's awesome, that's even better. But first thing, it has to hit the masses. With this poster, you look for a second and you go to see the movie. This is what I'm counting on. This is why I'm doing this. I have to bring people to the theater. So 
I think the main thing will be it has to sell. Second thing, it has to be bold to, to stand out, basically. And we can't overuse pink colors or red or something like that. It has to be bold in many different ways by showcasing characters or situations or angles, uh, colors too, typography. So it has to sell, it has to be bold, it has to tell the story. And when it comes to the story, I'm not saying that it has to tell the whole movie with the end and spoil it, but it has to intrigue you. This is one of the other things that poster has to do. It has to catch you, literally has to catch your imagination. And you have to ask yourself, what's then? What's next? What's happening? And this will bring you to the theater. If I can achieve that, my job is done. I think there's one more thing. I think when you're designing posters, you can't, deep in your heart, you can't love the movies. You can't, you can't this overcome your designs because in a way, please bear with me, you will lie in your artwork will lie. You won't represent the movie how it really is from the outside. You will put so much heart in it that it will distort the image. And this may be in your mind, maybe the best thing that happened to this movie, but in a way you are too deep in it and that distorts the message. In my mind, in order to stay creative or be creative or become a creative, you have to be somewhat interdisciplinary. There, it's, it's not just a design, it's not the sense of type. It's psychology, it's, 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 uh, it's observation, it's, it's remembering all this stuff. And not, not even remembering, but bringing it back into your memories when it comes to the time that needs your imagination. You can combine those two things. And if you can think in a really random way, logical random way, you can be really creative. You can combine things not combined before and create something beautiful out of it. It may be an image, it may be an idea that will trigger an image. So in my head, it works. It, I don't want to say it, but it somehow happens. I see images in my head, they're in the back of my head, and everything I do with the computer is just an execution of what I already see. And if it comes to, I don't know, talent, it, this may be my talent, that I see those images, that they come to my mind. I don't look for inspiration, and in my mind, I don't see being creative as a looking for inspiration. It just happens, then you're creative, you're not repeating, you're creating. 